It's been said there's an allure to neuroscience. Among all the incredible scientific research that's conducted on a daily basis, nothing hits public interest quite like exciting neuroscience trends. From ideas of scientifically plausible mind control, to questioning the future ability to upload human consciousness to supercomputers, to bringing entire societies of people together in arguments over color perception. That was a fun one. Uh, also, one in which I was correct, might I add. But outside of pop culture and viral trends, there's actually a real-life science community that ambitiously conducts this kind of incredible research in an often overlooked subfield of study in neuroscience. It's an area of study I was first exposed to as a neuroscience major in college who was always more interested in genes and cells than brains and behaviors. And it's a field I believe could use more aspiring scientists. So with that said, I implore you today to learn a little something about optogenetic research. Given that this field of study is not too well known outside the scientific community to bring everyone up to speed, optogenetics is a biotechnique most commonly used as a method of neuromodulation by combining the technologies of optics and genetics. First, scientists use established gene editing techniques to introduce a new gene into neurons of their choice that codes for a protein called channel rhodopsin 2. The channel rhodopsin protein family is a group of gated ion channels that are activated in the presence of light. These light-mediated ion channels come from unicellular algae where they act as the drivers of phototaxis, movement in response to light. Basically, light strikes the algae, the channel rhodopsin proteins embedded in the cell membrane open, the opening triggers the flow of ions across the membrane, also known as a current, and the current directly stimulates the flagella of the light-based specimen to beat. Channel rhodopsin 2, specifically found in the algae Chlamydomonas reinhardi I, question mark, is sensitive to light at a wavelength of approximately 473 nanometers, aka blue light. And its usage in neurons brings us over to the fiber optics of this field, a technology that is perhaps a bit more familiar to you, assuming you're watching this video using an internet connection. Given that, as of 2018, most internet service providers like Verizon Fios, <clears throat> fiber optic service have largely replaced the practice of using long distance electrical signaling running through copper wires to opt for the use of light as a signal that runs through flexible transparent fibers barely wider than that of human hair. There are two major factors playing into this decision, the speed of the transmission and attenuation or signal loss. Speed is fairly self-explanatory as light travels at speeds significantly faster than electrical current and attenuation, as it happens, is lower in optical fibers, due in part to the core of the fiber being surrounded by a cladding with a low refractive index that causes a total internal reflection of light as it moves through the fiber. More simply put, they have protective coatings that keep the light signals bouncing around inside the fiber to the target with very little signal escaping out. Electrical signals through copper wires, on the other hand, begin to lose power and weaken as the distance the signal needs to travel increases, making optical fibers the definitive choice for long-distance internet and cable connections. But so what does any of that have to do with controlling neurons, you might ask? Well, neurons work together as a network system of electrochemical signaling. As ion channels in a neuron open, an electrical signal is established that fires down the axon, where the release of a chemical signal is triggered across a synapse to either activate another neuron or trigger an event directly on some other body cell. Electrical signals gated by the opening of ion channels? Genetically engineered neurons expressing channel rhodopsin 2 ion channels activated by blue light? I think the connection's starting to become clear. Scientists can implant optical fibers to the channel rhodopsin 2 expressing neurons and effectively take control of their activity. Turn the blue light on, channel rhodopsin channels in the neuron open, and the neuron fires its signals. Turn the blue light out, channels close, and the neuron stops. It's a literal on-off switch for the components of the central nervous system that can drive output behaviors, taking control of the brain in real-world scenarios as demonstrated by this team of neuroscientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology optogenetically stimulating left hind leg contractions in mouse models. This research is genuinely awe-inspiring to me. And it's a field I believe could use more attention from aspiring scientists looking to map out and exploit detailed neural circuits in the brain to better diagnose and treat various nervous system disorders. So, as always, thank you for your time, 
and thank you for watching. Stay inquisitive.